Dragi Aleksandr, hvala vam mnogo. Dear guests, first I will just say that although according to the protocol when I'm as the Prime Minister when I'm in Serbia, I should speak in Serbian out of this time, out of respect for our co-organizers and the Honorable President de Souza, your colleagues, your team, and since it's an international conference, I will speak in English. Honorable President of the Serbian Academy of Arts and Sciences, Mr. Kostic, Honorable President of the World Academy of Arts and Science, Mr. de Souza, Honorable Director of the University of Belgrade, Ms. Popović, Mr. Nesković, Mr. Vlahović, uh, Mr. Djuricin, representatives of the Serbian Association of Economists, distinguished guests, professors, uh, students, um, their friends and colleagues. I have to say that uh, uh, for me, it is a great honor and a great privilege to speak about the future of education in the building which gathered through decades and in the Serbian Academy of Arts and Sciences, for all, which gathered for almost 178 years, the greatest minds, not only of our country, but of this part of Europe. And I want to thank also the World Academy of Arts and Sciences for deciding that, as we heard from Mr. Vlahovic, following Berkeley, and then Rome, and then Rio de Janeiro, you selected Belgrade and Serbia to host this important event. And I would like to think that at least to some extent, this is a testimony of our reforms and of our efforts to change, but also of the strength and the potential of our arts, of our scientists, creativity, and overall of our people. Throughout the world's history and the history of humankind and nation states, <coughs> what determined the success of one nation, of one society, and of individuals was education. But in today's fast-changing world, success, competitiveness, harmony, and also happiness of one society and one country more than ever, I think, depends on education. And of our ability to predict and to adapt to the future of education and challenges that it brings with it. This surely represents one of the key challenges for the countries and for governments across the world that need to reform our education system in order to make our younger generations ready for the jobs and the world of the future. The jobs and the world which do not yet exist today. And as we have heard also from Mr. Vlahovic, we cannot today even imagine or predict which way will they be like. And that is why education and the future of it is a topic which is amongst my government's top priorities, if not the most important one. I strongly believe that only a society based on knowledge, innovation, culture, creativity, and free thinking individuals can be a driving force of development. And the foundation of all of this is the quality of education. The changes that are happening in the world today are above all rapid. They're of such a character that it is often difficult for people to understand their scope and scale. We are faced with completely new technologies, with, with artificial intelligence, virtual, augmented reality, blockchain, big data analytics, and all of this requires education to change and adjust almost at the same pace. And I would like to think that in this government's mandate, we have started those necessary reforms of our education in order to prepare young people in Serbia for jobs in the 21st century. 
And the most important thing is the systematic approach and the systematic support. For this reason, we have decided that our efforts should in particular be focused on developing the unified information system for education, which will help us connect our education to our labor market so that we can track individual students' progress through the system, which profiles and levels of education they opt for depending on the school that they attend, how long they wait for employment based on the high school profile or study program that they have completed, what is their average salary once they're employed, and how fast as a country, all of us together, we get return on investment into each single individual in our society. And what was amazing to me, if I might add, when I became the Prime Minister, was that we never knew, and to this date, we still don't know how much money we invest in each of our students, in each of our school kid. How much money do we invest in them? And how fast that investment has its in return to us as a society. Once we implement this unified information system, we will make our education completely transparent. We will know how much we invested in each single person in this country and to what extent that investment returned to us and at what pace. And based on that, have we made the right investments? How can we change those investments? How, we, how can we make those investments better? Because the best thing we can do as a society is basically invest in people. We have also started at the same time in parallel with that, changes on all levels in education in Serbia. Together with UNICEF, we have impl implemented curriculum reform in preschool education, which provides more project-based learning and play-based learning in kindergartens, stimulating research, curiosity, and critical thinking. And our key goal for our education reform is to teach our young people how to think and not what to think. And because this is so important and is basically our key challenge, I will also say this in Serbian. Naš osnovni cilj je da napravimo obrazovni sistem koji neće učiti decu šta da misle, nego kako da razmišljaju. And this is, I think, in the root of all challenges in terms of educational system reform, at least in Serbia. There have also been a lot of work done and investments in school infrastructure and equipment in preschool institutions. We have, for example, started supplying our kindergartens with B-bots to develop algorithm thinking in children. And our plan is for all kindergartens in Serbia to be fully equipped with B-bots within the next three years. The curriculum reform has also been implemented in primary and secondary education outcome-oriented learning, project teaching, and elective subjects. In line with digitalization, to which we are very committed, we bring internet to every school classroom. Starting from this school year, we have introduced high-speed high speed wireless internet access to 500 schools, and we have already budgeted for the next 500 schools in 2020 to have our schools fully digital across Serbia by 2021. We currently have 10,000 digital classrooms with about 200,000 students attending classes in cities and towns across Serbia. And the results, I'm happy to say, are excellent. Both students and teachers are satisfied. Teaching is much more interactive and much more interesting. And this way of learning is much, much more attractive for younger generations, and knowledge is much more easily accepted. We have worked diligently and patiently to introduce specialized IT departments in high schools. And this was completely inconceivable until just five years ago. 
Now we have around 1,000 schools, one, sorry, 1,000 students across high schools in Serbia in specialized IT departments. IT and programming became compulsory subjects in Serbia from the fifth grade in prim primary schools, which is when kids are 10 and 11 years old. Today, in the fifth grade in Serbia, kids uh, learn Scratch as mandatory subjects. In the sixth grade, they learn Python as mandatory subject. In the seventh grade, Pi game. And as of next school year, September 2020, they will learn Jupiter as mandatory subject. Meaning that in 2021, we will have first generation of primary school kids leaving schools in Serbia with complete knowledge of all key programmatic program languages. And in this, Serbia is currently one of the most advanced countries in Europe. We are also developing dual education to have a more, um, a more communication, a better connection between our education and our labor market, our economy. We have now enrolled second generation of students in dual programs. And the results here also are fantastic. Around 80% of all the students who attended dual education programs are employed immediately after completing secondary school, while the other 20% opted to continue their education. Because we need this also at the high school, uh, higher education, so university level education, the, uh, the parliament has just passed the law on dual education in uh, universities. And to help create the skills needed for business, Serbia has developed, its, developed a strategic plan to establish 10 regional training centers that will be equipped to the highest standards, educate students and provide training and retraining for youth and adults in accordance with the requirements of companies in all key areas of work. <laughs> Mechanical engineering, construction, renewable energy, aviation and auto industries, electrical engineering and other areas. And we continue to invest in modern technologies. To date, we have set aside more than 100 million euros for investments in infrastructure for innovation, research and development, and startups. We are investing in science and technology parks, innovation labs, um, new infrastructure for faculties, startup centers across Serbia, and we hope that all of this will provide actually results in 2021, also in terms of much more investments in entrepreneurship in Serbia and Serbian youth investing into their startups and innovation companies. And again, our task is to teach young generations how to think, not to be afraid to question things and question authority. Think critically, push the boundaries of everything they know. This is our obligation, our obli obligation to equip them with the 21st century skills that they need. It is up to us to explain to them that they should not have to fear to rise up to challenges and make mistakes, because mistakes are good. Mistakes are just one stepping stone from the final success. And finally, the events like this help us achieve these goals. And again, we face with really much the same challenges, uh, similar issues that all governments across the world face. And these challenges and these issues are so difficult and so complex that at the end of the day, you can resolve them only by working together. The governments cannot do this alone. We need the academy to support us in this. We need business people to support us in this. We need civil society. And thank you so much again for hosting this event in Belgrade, in Serbia. And again, we hope this is a testimony to all the efforts that we are making to change us and our society. Thank you very much.